Good morning. Good morning. Today, gun owners from here will join others from across the Beehive State. And Utah will become the 20th constitutional carry state. Constitution. That word should have new meaning for all of us today. We will no longer be forced to beg for our unalienable rights. Instead, we will be united in our common liberty. From now on, May 5th will be known as the day the people of Utah declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish from a political fight. We will not beg for our constitutional carry rights. We will not tolerate gun control without a fight. We're gonna carry on. We're gonna conceal. Today, we celebrate Utah Constitutional Carry Day. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Go Utah! Everyone, Utah is now a constitutional carry state, and Randy Quaid is thrilled about it. <laughs> Welcome again to the Tap Rack Bang Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Danger Frazier. With me, as always, is the tactical tackle himself, Tyler Witzke. Howdy. Welcome to the program, Tyler. Thanks, Ryan. How you doing today? Super terrific. Um, yeah, on Cinco de Mayo, you know, having a party out there in Utah, constitutional carry goes into effect. 20 states now, damn near half of America. You can carry your gun concealed without begging the government permission, <laughs> begging for the government's permission and paying a bunch of money just to do what the Constitution already said you can do. Right. Neat stuff. What do you think, Tyler? I just want to know how the heck you got here so fast after talking to all those pro gun Utahns out there. I tell you, they um those those cats know how to party, especially the <laughs> fellow with the MP5. Don't get me started on him. Oh man, yeah, but it was good times were had by all, and more states to come. Um, folks, you're watching Tap Rack Bang, the only no compromise pro gun, pro freedom, pro American, pro everything that doesn't suck podcast that you've ever found on the interwebs. Um, we didn't get canceled by either our employers or Mark Zuckerberg. So I guess we're just going to have to try a little bit harder, Tyler. Yeah. Let's go for it. So let's go. Um, yeah. So let's start the day off with the bullet points. Cool. So first off, let's talk about constitutional carry. Obviously we already touched on mm. Utah. Um, how about Texas, dude? I Texas. Mean, been decade long fight. I know fixed toast and gun rights. <laughs> we, allegedly, we, allegedly, yeah. So we touched on that last episode, but uh, Texas has actually passed constitutional carry out of the Senate. Hot dog. Yeah, mm. and uh, Governor Abbott has actually signaled that he will sign it when it comes to his desk. It's just a matter of whether or not the House will concur with the Senate's um, uh, amendments. So, yeah, kind of a. A goofy choke point in the political process, so we're not in the clear yet in Texas, but we're close, but we're not not out of the fight. We got to keep the pressure on. Lieutenant Dan, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, make it happen. It's Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick is the man who can make this happen, or he can kill it. And Texans, pay attention, keep the pressure on. Because you're so close. So it's been close. a 10-year a fight, you know, for a lot of people, more than 10 years. You know, um, Ben, Jerry, and Bernie Sanders up in Vermont can already carry concealed without begging the government permission. But, you know, Ted Nugent and all you other crazy bastards living down in Texas are still living in the gun control stone age. So let's see this one to the finish line. I'm excited. Are you excited? Dude, I'm pumped. Yeah, I'm I'm jazzed even though we're here in Colorado and, you know, we, we got a long road ahead. But, you know, I like freedom for everybody. And, you know, go Texas. Eat some barbecue and whatever you, you people do down there. 
<laughs> and let's let's see this one to the finish line. Right. And they'd be the 21st constitutional 21. carry constant constitutional carry state. Constitution. You know? And uh that would make them the fifth one this year. That's a record. Five in one year. We're like Oprah with constitutional carry this year because Utah gets constitutional carry, Montana gets constitutional carry, Tennessee gets constitutional carry, and Texas gets constitutional carry. I, I miss forgot, any? I think you forgot Iowa. You know, oh, my, yeah. my, my my home state. So does anyone really care about Iowa though? I mean, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go, go carry, carry your gun on the cornfields, Iowa. My my kin come from Iowa too, and we we love you as well. Right. All righty. So finish it off, Texas. Do your job, Dan Patrick. I believe in you, Lieutenant Dan. Ice cream. And it's not Danica Patrick. It's Dan Patrick. <laughs> Okay. All right. Moving on from Texas, Texas. we have mm. South Carolina. South Carolina. Can you give us an update? What happened there? South Carolina. Um, a weaker bill. That's a open carry bill. You know, a shoot me first carry bill was rolling its way through the South Carolina legislature, and you know, a good amendment was proposed that would shift it over to being full on. American freedom, love, and constitutional carry where you don't go to jail for putting on a coat and it was killed. Yep. Unfortunately. Sucks. Yeah. Nine, nine Republicans joined the Democrats to say that if you're open carrying and you put on your coat, you're now a criminal. So South Carolina, you got some work to do. Next next elections, you know, take notes. NAGR will let you know who voted wrong. These nine Republicans, watch out. You know, start. Uh, I, I would update my resume if I was a South Carolina Republican be, who voted wrong on this amendment, who had the chance to bring freedom to the Palmetto State, whatever that means. Yeah, I mean, you think about it too. They got one of the biggest like gun manufacturers there palmetto state armory god yeah damn shame you know shame. <clears throat> other states out there be like utah hopefully be like texas don't be like south carolina nope yeah that's they're up there on our naughty list all right what do we have next Fraser? the supreme court um of course here at the national association for gun rights we also have the national foundation for gun rights where we get all up in the li- ligative, ligative, legis, ligative, litigate, litigation, yeah. lit- litigation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, producers. Lit- litigation, <laughs> litigating for gun rights. And um, we mentioned it last week. <clears throat> and um, New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Corlett. You know, the, the obvious bill that says you can carry your gun outside of your house, you know, Bear arms. Who who knew that's a new concept? Obviously for New York, but um, it's on to the Supreme Court, and you know it it can go a couple of different ways. We're hoping for the best, but uh, you know, despite what the liberal media says, talking about how conservative the Supreme Court is these days, we'll we'll actually see what happens. We need to hold them hold them to that, you know. Yeah, we do, we got Justice Amy Coney Barrett in there mm-hmm. last year, and. She's been kind of untested so far as far as Second Amendment. So uh, time to put up or shut up. Time to grin and bear, bear it. it? <laughs> <laughs> Almost like we didn't plan that. Right, <laughs> right. So um, it's, it's going to be a fun case to watch. And if you want to get involved, we're going to file an, an amicus brief. Amicus, I amicus. I don't, I don't know. I don't either. Amicus, my. Amicus. And if you want to support the foundation, go to gunrightsfoundation.org. You know, give us. Uh, donate and uh, help us get this uh, mm-hmm. the people at the, the uh, gun rights foundation they're they're good people um, <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah uh, yeah I know uh, it's it's always funny that the media likes to talk about how after Comey Barrett's confirmation to the Supreme Court how conservative it is but you can basically count on you know John Roberts acting like a baby back bitch during this case and voting alongside the gun grabbers. So, you know, we'd love to see this one go through the 
implications could be amazing for gun rights and states across the country could kind of, you know, get kicked into gear. But, you know, we're not holding our breath because you never you never do know what's going on up there in the Supreme Court. But, right. you know, we're we're going all in for that one. Yeah, it'll be fun to watch. And uh, like I said, go to fun gun, go to gunrightsfoundation.org and help us out. You know, uh, we can use all the help we can from every Second Amendment loving American out there um one thing i want to talk about is talk about it the gun control lobby spent over one million dollars in quarter one million. they got their their poster boy joe biden up there in, <laughs> in the in the oval office and yet they're spending all their money trying to pass gun control how does that work for him yet this year fraser uh i see nothing yeah nothing yet nothing um yet. joe biden's resorting to executive orders because pro gun patriots out there have got their throats on the back of the heads of the Senate, not letting nothing throats on the back <laughs> foot foot to the throat. Uh, what <laughs> foots on the back of the heads of the Senate? Um, but yeah, nothing's made it through. Nothing's made it through Congress. No, nope. they're in desperation mode. They're making yeah. it rain, and they can't get nothing. Right, and that's pretty cool. Right, right. And Americans keep buying guns. I mean, we see April was another record month, mm-hmm. and it just it just shows you that Americans aren't going to stand up for this kind of crap, Joe Biden. Yeah. Well, um, you know, at the time, by the time that this uh, podcast is on the interwebs, and uh, you're listening or watching or however people ingest this information, um, Biden's thirty days to for the ATF to regulate and ban ghost guns, you know, will have happened. So I don't know, you know, we're, we're, we're here in the past. So all you people in the future, you know, leave a comment and let me know back here in the past what's going on because it's, it's something that's interesting. You know, we got for just for the occasion, we got our sexy, delicious, beautiful. Is that a ghost gun? That's a ghost gun. My friend. Oh my gosh. Mm. Dude, that thing is so scary. Did you just look at it? You know, obviously more dangerous than anything going on here is this ghost gun, but goodness. Yeah. So we're waiting to find out what goes on with that. No matter what, we're not going to take this one on the chin. Um, it's a boxing thing, Christian. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, as soon as anything comes out of the ATF, that's when it's time to turn up the heat. You know, back in, I think it was December, the ATF said that they were going to ban pistol braces. And uh, because of the ridiculous backlash from pro-gun Americans, they they backed down, you know. Even though they're not, sus- like, subject to the, to the voting public, they, you know, caved when pro-gun Americans said, we will not tolerate this crap and... Uh, you know, that's what it's going to have to take again. So stay right. tuned for more on that one. Yeah. One quick note I made here in, in our notes that we received for this podcast. Um, on March, in March, the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that criminal law can't be created by unaccountable bureaucrats, the ATF, <clears throat> and that bub, bump stocks can't be classified as machine guns. Hey. Yeah. So there's, aside from people, you know, raising. Raising a ruckus. And I heard a ruckus. Could you describe the ruckus, sir? On the ATF's comment boards, um, you know, we're we're not going to stand by and let this happen. Right. Um, you know, we're we got as we said before, we got the foundation. We will take these bastards to court, and we will fight every way, every step of the way. You know. And um, yeah, it's it ain't it ain't over until we decide it is. But um, exactly. Yeah, I ain't afraid of no ghost. No. I think we should switch gears here. Before you, know. you do, I just want to, you know, we're we're on our second podcast ever, Tyler, and wow. we've already acquired sponsorship, and since we're talking about the ATF, we're talking about ghost guns. I just want to say that today's podcast is sponsored by ATF Director nominee David Chipman Supple Bosoms. So thank you very much for sponsoring this podcast. We couldn't have done it without you. Wow. All right, move it on, Tyler. 
All right. We were in my waistband last weekend. Now let's dive into your waistband. See what Inside you got. the waistband. Wow. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and whip it on out. What do I got inside my waistband? Can you see it? Can you see it? Ooh, look at that. This is Wilson. This is Wilson. Wilson! Wilson! This is my beautiful, lovely SIG P320 compact with a Wilson grip. If you are in a computer right now, I'm not actually pointing this gun at you. You know, I'm pointing it at a camera with no one behind it. And it's clear. But, and it's clear. It's clear. We've safety checked it. We'll, 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 yep. we'll cave to the safety Nazis out there. Yep. Um, yeah, my everyday carry these days is my Sig Sauer P320. Um, I like this gun because I was born in 1989 and I am a millennial mm -hmm. snowflake and I like to be special. And this gun because the serial number is on the trigger pack, allows you to really upgrade it more than any other striker fire, more than your Glocks. You know, I like SIG makes me sound fancy for having something European. Um, but I threw on the Wilson Combat Grip Module. It feels amazing. It fits my hand. I love the beaver tail. Wow. Um, I like the trigger. Um, I put some True Glow sights on there. Uh, they're the the something something pros. They got uh, fiber optic and tritium, so they work great in the day and they work great in the night. I dig it. Um, I've been carrying it every day. Have you cleaned that thing yet since you bought it? Actually, no. <laughs> um, I you know I was skeptical. I've been a Smith and Wesson man for a long time, and I wanted to make sure that um, you know these Europeans could make something as reliable as something something made in America, Bobby and. Uh, by golly, 2,000 rounds deep. The only malfunctions was when I borrowed some uh, hand-loaded ammunition from a buddy of mine. And so it, it did have a couple of failure to feeds with that. But shooting factory ammo, it hasn't had a single flaw yet. I probably should give it a good bath now that it's my everyday carry gun. But I dig it, and uh, it makes me feel special because it looks different than everyone else's. I really wish I had a good joke about your gun like you did last week about the mechanic, <laughs> but I, I really can't come up with anything. Like, this is an amazing gun. It, the ergonomics are amazing. Yeah. And it just feels right in your hand, you know. That's what she said. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. And, yeah, it's it's a new enough one that I can throw it on the ground and hit it in the back with a hammer, and it won't have those silly uh, trigger malfunctions where it shoots. So I dig it. Um and yeah, I like to be special, and my gun doesn't look like everyone else's Glock 19. So I love you, Wilson. Yeah. All righty. Awesome. What do we got next, Frazier? Well, time to hop right out of my waistband and into oh shooting blanks where we get to have a little fun. So last week in our inaugural, inaugural. inaugural episode, um, you know, we went back in time and our producers looked at the uh, comments section and we just, they brought up um, Rob. Ritaco? Ritaco. Hmm. Ritaco. Well, Ritaco Tuesday uh, had to say, he, he said he didn't like the idea of Tap Rack Bang, not our podcast, but the, um, the immediate action drill. He said, uh, don't like the idea of tap rack bang. Uh, never want the bang as an ingrained part of the process. Should be tap rack back on target. Bang is a separate decision. Um, well, I all separate decisions. Anyway? I think, yeah, they're definitely all separate decisions. And I told myself that I was, you know, the one critique from the previous podcast was apparently I say nerd too much, but I think, uh, uh, Bobby Tacos is a full blown nerd. Listen, man, Bobby Tacos, Robert Taco, Bobby Tacos. Let me invite you to just take a man night, cook up a steak, pour yourself a beer or a whiskey, whatever your beverage is of choice, and go watch Dirty Harry and rethink the way you do the internet. Yes, okay. Please. I mean, because. Do you think Dirty Harry would watch this podcast and uh, leave a comment saying, well, you know, bang should be a separate decision? No. He'd carry his 44 Magnum and he'd go kill bad guys. Okay? So Bobby Tacos, grow a pair, watch Dirty Harry, eat a steak, and I'm done with you.
Cool. Up next. Ooh. David Hogg. My boy. David Hogg. I always thought, what if there was a weird combination of David Hogg and David Goggins? Oh but gosh. he was just like not as stupid. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I don't know where I was going with that. But his name would be David Hoggins. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So David Hogg is replying to a tweet here from the Hill about Texas lawmakers approved bill allowing people to carry handguns without a license. Here is David Hogg's response. People are going to die because of this. Not very pro-life of the Texas legislature. Uh, um, again, David Hogg is a nerd, but um, beyond having the most punchable face in the history of the universe, I think he needs to actually pull the numbers on this one because you look at every other state that already has constitutional carry, and they're basically the safest states in the whole damn country. I mean, you know, Chicago's a long way off from having constitutional carry, but, you know, Vermont and South Dakota already have those laws. And uh, which one do you feel more safe, you know, if you're a single mother walking home in the middle of the night? Right. I don't think it's Chicago. No. Nope. And it, it, guns save lives. I mean, yeah. it's been proven time and time again. A great equalizer. Exactly. So, mm hmm. I think it's very pro-life the Texas legislature to Hell pass yeah. constitutional carry. You know, it, it's pro the lives of the good guys. Exactly. The the people that want to defend themselves and their families, and it's 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 definitely anti-life of the of the evildoers out there. So it's trying to disarm us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know. So shooting blanks, David Hogg. No surprise. Moving What's on. What's next? Bay oh. Area girl. Oh, oh my god. god, I can't wait for this one, Tyler. What's it say? The Wild West wasn't nearly this bad. We are in ISIS territory. People will start migrating away from this killing field. No way to live. Let all the gun nuts kill off each other. They will. Um, thank you, Bay Area girl. And, um, you know, if you want help packing your bags it, for you to start migrating away, we'd, we'd gladly accommodate you. You know, you can head on south to to Mexico and where they have a lot of gun control and see how safe it is down there. Um, you know, God bless you for trying to save us here. She's in that shitty part of San Francisco, isn't she? Ooh, we should send her the poop map. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Where, where you can't have a gun, but San Francisco has a map of all the poops, yeah. you know, because in public. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you should, uh, take care of some poop control before you try to push gun control on all the rest yeah. of us Americans who've got our shit together. Yeah, instead of <laughs> having shit. blood li poop. Instead of having blood line the streets from all the guns in San Francisco, <laughs> you got poop line in the streets. The streets ran ran brown. <laughs> oh, this is going to be good. Mom's demand action. What they oh, say, boy. Fraser? David Chipman is uniquely qualified to lead the ATF yeah. as a gun safety expert and decorated law enforcement official who served as a special agent for ATF for more than 25 years. David Chipman, who's been a favorite of our show, we remind everyone that today's episode was brought to you by David Chipman's Supple Bosoms. But um, for those of you who actually don't know David Chipman's life story, Tyler, fill them in. David Chipman started life, I mean, his professional life as a agent for the ATF. And, uh, he uh, he was he was one of the lead guys there at Waco when they at Waco and Ruby Ridge Ruby gun Ridge. confiscation you know in the most disgusting way possible um, you know if if David Chipman is confirmed to lead the ATF um, you know this is the true situation of hide your kids hide your wives and hide your dog because David Chipman's taking everybody's guns um, yeah. People died because of the operations that he was on. And after years of actually, you know, conducting gun confiscation raids in the most sickening way possible, this cat, you know, sold his services to the gun control lobby and has worked for every town. Um, he's worked for uh, the Giffords group. Um, so, yeah, uniquely qualified to head up the ATF, or I like to call them the fun police. Um, That's no kidding. Yeah, he he's he probably is. I mean, he's he's their dream, you know. 
confiscating guns for for more than 25 years. You know, they're they're probably right. Um, our argument here would be that the ATF doesn't need to exist. As the old meme goes, the ATF should be a convenience store. Mm. I Isn't like that. That. Amazing? that sounds great. One stop right. shopping. Right. All right. Next up, we have a reply to a tweet from the Associated Press. Oh boy. The Supreme Court will he- hear an appeal to expand gun rights in the U.S. in a New York case over the right to carry a firearm in public for self defense. The case will be argued in the fall. Obviously, we touched this subject earlier. But uh, let's see. Let's see what Josh Rivas, coffee addict, addict and cutie connoisseur cutie had to say. Cutie connoisseur. Oh, boy. boy um, oh. Let me let me get into character here. The Supreme Court might just screw us all here because conservatives would rather preserve a white man's right to keep killing capital others in this country over everyone else's right to choose safety and expression of freedom. Oh, uh, what do you got to say about this? I won't say nerd because I'm not allowed to anymore. Josh Rivas, Tyler. Safety is having a gun and knowing how to use it. Yeah. Keeping it on you. Yeah, I got I got a baby girl on the way and I I've, I've already bought her first 22 rifle and by golly, she's going to be more um safe with it than Josh Rivas is with his coffee and cuties is them little oranges, I suppose. Congratulations uh, by the way. That's thank awesome. Thank you. Thank That's you. Awesome. Yeah, proud, excited. Um but yeah, uh any any Josh Rivas's that my little girl wants to bring around when she when she's grown up is gonna get the old um, come into the door with daddy cleaning a shotgun treatment right. because. And I, I want to go back, go back to the expression mm-hmm. of freedom. Freedom. What, what does what, this cat know about freedom? What better expression of freedom is there? Is is the Second Amendment carrying a firearm? Yeah, that's a huge expression the, of freedom. The the simple idea that you have the right to defend your own life. Without begging the government to do it, you know, yeah. Josh Rivas, read a book. What's this whole or thing? Or at least ab- the Constitution. What's this whole thing about a white man's right? Because as far as I know, the Constitution, Second Amendment, it's for everyone. It's for everybody, you know. Yeah, my, you know, my wife's got access to all our guns in the house. She's all about it. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be a man. Either, I mean, like you're we saying, could, we could walk around the office here at the National Association for Gun Rights and see some some non-white men strapped and kicking ass and enjoying freedom in a way that Josh Rivas will never know because he's dependent on the government to save himself. Yep. And we got those gun toting females too. You can't forget about them. Hell yeah. All right. Well, Josh Rivas. Shooting uh, blanks. You're shooting blanks. Definitely shooting blanks, but enjoy your coffee and tiny oranges, Josh Rivas. Yeah. You you do you, man. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. What? I'm sorry. Did you, did you, I, I'm, did you watch the Cuties Netflix documentary? No, no. I'm. It's all about pedos, man. Ooh. Yeah. Josh Rivas. Um. Instead of commenting on gun rights stuff, why don't you go ahead and just uh, send a shout out to Chris Hansen, and he'll go ahead and take care of you. I'm Chris um, yeah. Hansen. Yeah. Why don't you have a seat, Josh Rivas? <laughs> all right. I think that- wrapping up, shooting blanks. Yeah. That's all done. Um. We'd like to thank all of our viewers. Um, you know, the comment section was lit last time with nerds telling us that Tab Rack Bang is not the right way to go about it, but we want to have more fun down there. So I'm throwing out a debate. If you've made it this far, leave a comment below. If you're getting into a gunfight and you get one battle buddy, Martin Riggs from Lethal Weapon or John McClane from Die Hard, who do you want? Tyler, what's your choice? John McClane. John McClane, because you were born in like 1990 and you have no idea who Martin Riggs is, do you? No, I don't. Jesus. Make me we're, sick. We're going to put that in my homework list that you made yeah. for me to watch. Tyler's movies. homework. By the next podcast, he'll have watched the first Lethal Weapon. I'm absolutely going with Martin Riggs. Um, let me know. Everyone here seems to disagree with me. Folks, leave a if you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment below. Martin Riggs or John McClane, who's got your back? in your next gunfight. Um, thank you for tuning in. We're here every Friday. Make sure to like us on all the things and hit all the buttons. Yep. And don't forget to check out nationalgunrights.org. Become a member if you are not. 
and check out gunrightsfoundation.org. They are our, our NAGR's legal arm. Woo. Yeah, great stuff. And if Thanks. you want to come, do it. If you want to become a FLD member, Frontline Defender, do it. They are literally the frontline defenders of our, of the Second Amendment. Do it. Check out nagrfld.org. And if you want to help out the podcast, go to nagr.link slash trb2. Do it. Do it. All right. That wraps it up. Thank you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs>